So today we have an open day uh, where patients that we work with, members of the cohort in the Oxford Parkinson Centre, can come along, hear about the work that's going on in Oxford. And we hope to convey to them information about what we're doing, but also the excitement of the work that's underway, the optimism that we feel that we hope we will move towards better understanding the disorder, giving them better treatment opportunities in the clinic, and ultimately one day we hope to develop a cure. Some of my colleagues in the group um, have already had great success using the technology that's built into smartphones to monitor the subtle movement problems that people with Parkinson's have. Um, what I'm interested in doing is taking that one step further and looking at smart watches, which have all of the same technology built into them, but have the advantage of being able to be worn, and therefore we can collect data overnight. And I hope that this is going to give us some really important insights into sleep problems in Parkinson's disease. Well, one of the most significant side effects we've seen is something we call impulsive compulsive disorders. Now, this can affect up to 15% of people who are treated for Parkinson's and can have a huge impact on an individual's life. So alpha-synuclein is a very interesting protein. Uh, it is crucial in the pathogenesis of Parkinson's. And especially the part that is crucial is that it changes its shape, so to speak. It changes its conformation. And that has an impact on how it functions. It's a protein that helps neurons communicate, as far as we know. And it is also a marker. So we can find ways to detect it in the body, in different regions of the body, and try to understand more about its role. A lot of what we do with the cohort is very translational because I'm a clinician, I'm looking after patients, I'm seeing them in clinic uh, every week, uh, both in clinic but also on the ward. So you learn that you have to get able to communicate effectively. That's a crucial part of my job as a doctor and any other doctor would tell you the same. And I don't see that research should be any different um, unless we actually communicate what we're doing and we also get a sense back from people that what we're actually addressing is actually key to people living with Parkinson's, I think the research can have a tendency to kind of veer off track and miss what's really crucial. It means a lot to me because I grew up here, I've been involved, you know, live here, at the university's on the doorstep. This exciting work is going on here, where I live. You know, I haven't got to go, I can probably get to it on a bike. And that's really stimulating for, for, for me and I think the Oxford branch and the OPDC have, got a, have now got a very good understanding of each other. I think it's encouraging for participants, for people with Parkinson's, to see, well, the amount of effort that is uh, around trying to understand Parkinson's and really trying to make a difference going forward. Um, and most of them do understand that what we are working on may not have direct consequences, but still, it is clear that with their help, we're understanding more about it and hopefully will make a difference in the future.